Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under Featured con Content. You just hit that button. You hit Subscribe. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you get it for one full year, folks, for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, okay? So you can come over. You can test drive it. As you test drive it, what you're going to see once you're over in Steve's page is that all the different tools that he uses and the explanation of how these tools work, okay? So, you know... You got a huge amount of information, great newsletter, check it out. If it works for you, that's awesome. If it doesn't work for you on the 28th day, 29th day, just tell us, you know, it's just not working for me at this particular point, and guess what? No problem. You still had a great education. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, first, Happy New Year to you. Last, yes, last Happy Monday New Year. I know, Happy man. Happy New Year's, and so it, what, so, uh, How's that? And quite, a, quite a first week, huh? Quite a first week. Uh, there's, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, what's so intriguing here is that these, you know, last week not much happened, but these tech stocks, well, all the, the chip stocks, I mean, they're just like re yeah, reunited, Absolutely. ignited yeah, yeah, like yeah. nothing, like. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so first a little bit of, a little bit of uh, football. So uh, congratulations sure. to, to you and your team, the Tampa Bay. Next uh, Monday should be one heck of a game yes. against uh, the, the Eagles at home. So that's a cool thing. I think that uh, our Dolphins uh, will be saying goodbye after next Sunday. That, just too many injuries. You know, that, that too game, many injuries. It, it was a, that was a great game to watch, man. I mean, it, that yeah. was – if you didn't see this game, folks, okay, you know uh, – yeah, Buffalo came down twice, lost the ball <laughs> yeah. at the, oh. the, the goal line. They were then they then were he fumbled, himself. right? Yeah. And, you know, after that, I'm saying to myself, oh, my God. That's the, but, yeah, it, quite a game, man. No yeah. and, and I'm looking forward to tonight's game, too. Michigan oh, yeah. against Washington. Oh, I can't wait. That's Thank, Yeah, thankfully it's on early. I know, uh, 7.30. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, those, those games that don't start till 8.30 at night. Woo. No, I agree. Isn't it amazing, Steve, that... Like, if we go back to the pros again. Yeah. Like, this is like the ultimate gladiators, man. I mean, it's oh, so crazy. Totally. It's like, oh, you know, yeah. I was looking at it. And you know it's so wild, folks, okay, that when you say that, you know, if you've ever seen the Colosseum, okay, the Colosseum in Rome is amazing, man, okay? That, totally. That's the bottom yeah. line. And what are the biggest stadiums that we have? Well, guess what? We might have got a little more sophisticated, but it's football. Right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah go, right. go, yeah, yeah. go. Get him, get him. <laughs> you know, so it's like. We're only, we're only sophisticated in how we handle the adult beverages. Now most stadiums you can almost order, and they'll bring it to you. It's a, it's a great thing. It really is amazing, man. Amazing. <laughs> it is a great thing. All right, so I thought we'd talk about the market just for a little bit. Yep. Uh, we've got the, the ES, the NQ, and the Russell 2000. Uh, last week, they each generated profile change in trend signals. So I'll explain what that means to everybody that's out there. And they did it for their daily time frame. And if you take a look at this chart here, the upper left-hand side is the ES Mini. The upper right-hand is the NQ. Lower left is the Dow. Uh, lower right is the uh, Russell 2000. And the blue diag the blue horizontal lines on this chart, folks, those represent profile levels. What profile levels are, at the top, it tells us where sellers are at. At the bottom, it tells us where the buyers are at. And if there's a third line, often referred to as the centers, where buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside that range. It, once we close below the bottom of a daily profile, if you do it for two consecutive sessions, that generates a change in trend signal. So on the upper left-hand side for the ES Mini, I show those, uh, those two signals that we've gotten out here. We have the same thing for the NQ. Now, what's interesting here is that the Dow has still not closed below the bottom of its profile. So it has not generated okay. a profile change in trend. The other three have, but the Dow hasn't. What that tells me, Tom, is we just want to keep an eye on the Dow because if that generates a change in trend, maybe that's all that the market is waiting for. I don't know whether it is or it isn't, but that's something to certainly pay attention yes, to. Yes, I now, see what you're saying, right. Yeah, so, you know, so not all markets top at the exact same time, as nope. you know. 
Nope. So, you know, so what's the what's the weak link out here? Well, the strong link is the Dow. That could turn into a weak link if it does close below profile. Now, one of the reasons that the Dow may not have generated a change in trend signal is because of global capital flows out there. So this is a cool chart in that it shows the Dow for its daily time frame and shows how it's trading in all of these major currencies. So we've got the dollar, euros, yen. We've got the Great British Pound, the Canadian loonie, the Swedish krona, the Swiss franc, the Chinese yuan. Uh, and the Australian, uh, do the Aussie dollar out there. So what's interesting here is that the Dow priced in dollars made a new all-time high on January 2nd. Priced in euros, it was January 2nd as well. Priced in yen, it was January 5th, so just a few days later. Great British pound, January 2nd as well. Now, what I want to, I, when we opened up the show, we were talking about kind of an interesting, not, it was a very interesting week last week. What I, what I want people to, to, and I just want to describe this, to folks out there. There is this January cycle that exists out there. So for example, the all-time high in the Dow, I'm not the, the Dow, um, where is it? Uh, that's probably not on this chart here. Um, when markets make significant tops, it'll do it when they're all making the same high at just about the exact same time. And so knowing that the Dow made a top on January 2nd uh, in dollars, in euros, uh, uh, yen in the, on January 5th and in pounds on January 2nd. Those are the core currencies in January 5th, by the way, in terms of Aussie dollars out there. There are times, many times, where we see the high for the year. This would be 2024 we're talking about. Okay. It really takes place on basically the first day of the year. So we may be going back to take out those highs. But if we don't go back and take it, just people should just be aware of that January effect out. This is the Stevie January effect. Because if you go back and you take a look at other charts out there, you'll see that high can come in during that first week. And you never really look back. So if we do take out the highs, that's a positive. Uh, at least it's a, um, I don't know, I guess a short-term positive. Yes. These are the top eight stocks, Tom, with inside the Dow. They make up 49% of its weightings out there. Home Depot uh, generated a, Rhodes, a, a TD9 count bottom. Um, uh, last week out there. So that's got a bottom. Microsoft has a TD9 count of Rhodes Mintum Indicator top, but all that it's been doing is just consolidating sideways with inside its profile, and it has not busted through. So it does not have a profile change in trend. Uh, Goldman Sachs has, has yet to close below its profile. So no profile change in trend, ch uh, change in trend there. Amgen is likely going to negate, we're talking about the uh, uh, chip stocks, it's likely going to negate its TD9 count top today with a close above 305, um, 30509. So we take a look at these eight stocks that make up 49% of the uh, weighting out here. And in fact, uh, we don't even have uh, Apple on this. And it's not one of the top eight weightings. Apple formed a buy the D point pattern today. So I believe we're going to get some more rally. Um, I didn't get to, to one of the charts that said the one thing we've got to be a bit cautious of this chart right here for its daily time frame. This is the ES mini. Okay. Today is going to be day number two of a rally. This is the ES. This is the. I'm sorry. That was the. Uh, this is the S&P 500 going back to our October 11th uh, high out here. Rallies typically last two to four consecutive sessions higher, and that's what this shows here. I often say that during the show out there. Here's kind of proof in the pudding. So today could be a top, believe it or not. I love Anyways, it. So I'll leave. I'll leave it like that. Thanks, Steve. Have a great one. A safe one. You bet, Tom. Take care. Stay right there, folks. Come right.